All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to We Call Bank. This is episode 11, actually episode 11 this time. You know, the numbers got a little confused. I don't know what I said in the other ones, but um, this is episode 11. Uh, topics of the day, we got Mike Evans' uh, contract. Uh, they didn't get a deal done before, you know, the players and the, um, the manager's deadline or agent's deadline. So they're going to have to wait to, you know, try to get that deal done or move him during the season. Uh, Randall Cobb, we're going to talk about the Randall Cobb blindside hit. Um, talk about Cooper Cup is uh, – get that off the line. Cooper Cup and, uh, you know, had a minor setback, so he might miss a couple games early in the season. Chris Jones, uh, Chiefs didn't get a contract extension done with him, so, you know, who knows if he's going to come back to the Chiefs. Are they going to force their hand and, you know, have to trade him? Um I don't know. That's going to be a tough deal uh, with them. With with him, you know, kind of forcing his hand. That means they're probably not going to get real value for him back. So, you know, that's a top three interior lineman there that you know you might have to let go for picks. You know, so you know that's going to suck. And then moving on to the NBA, uh, Team USA, they're they're playing pretty good. You know, they had a tough game against uh, I think it was Montenegro last night. I think. They were down, and Anthony Edwards had to bring them back, and they ended up winning by like 10 or something. But apparently it was pretty close. I saw Anthony Edwards scored 17 uh, in the second half. So, you know, we got that going on. And then uh, the NBA ref, Eric Lewis, apparently, you know, there was some investigation going on with him having like social media accounts and stuff like that. And uh, he just decided to retire. So that makes it a little uh, – What's the word for uh, suspicious? Um, you know, people are saying, you know, he had social media accounts and he was rigging the games and, you know, he helped Boston win multiple games. I think he was refing when uh, LeBron didn't get that call in the Celtics game in the regular season, which ended up forcing them to lose the game. Um, which, I mean, that's not the only reason they lost. But, you know, that was kind of an important game for the Lakers. Um, but, yeah, and then last but not least, we're going to talk about 2K. Um, got some people complaining about not being able to have a 99 dunk, 99 three, 99 ball handle, 99 defense, 99, <laughs> 99 speed, 99 70. You know, people complaining, bro. They want to have a demigod. So, moving on, uh, starting with the first topic, Mike Evans' contract. It, this goes along with like almost every player that's like not getting a contract. I mean, these are key pieces to the team. I do get the Bucks. I feel like the Bucks got a year. They got, like, a year or two years left of, like, being playoff contenders and really might even be just this year. Like, after this year, they might be in rough shape and they're going to go back to, to mediocrity. But um, I feel like they needed to get a Mike Evans contract extension done. You know, Chris Godwin tore his ACL two seasons ago, tried to come back last season. Um, I think he ended up, like, getting a little came – coming back but then getting some kind of injury again and it took him out for a little bit longer. So – I mean, they still got Chris Godwin if Mike Evans goes. I just don't know if Chris Godwin is that number one receiver. I think he's playing good because he has Mike Evans, you know, beside him. So, um, I think Mike Evans is still going to play. So, I mean, that's good for you. Uh, Baker Baker's going to need him out there. So, at least he's not, you know, being a diva about it and uh, not showing up to, you know, training camps and stuff like that. But, I mean, how do you think uh, – what, what do you think is the outcome of, of this after the season, I guess? I mean – as far as their season goes, if they don't have Mike Evans, they're they're out of playoff contention. Honestly, I mean that's that's your guy, that's your number one receiver. I mean he he's put up the stats to prove it. If you ain't got Mike Evans, you really ain't really got much of an offense. Let's be honest. I mean there's no real key pieces at all on your offense. And start bringing Dallas or Red Bull. Why is that? You just you you, you sound like you're like. You just like out of it, man. You talk, Bro, because you're I get off work and then yeah, I'm man, immediately talking, tired. Man. All right, all right. We, I mean, you don't gotta like bang your head against the desk, but like, <laughs> all right. So um, this is football we talk about, man. Get we wait I for know, the season. I like I get right off work and then I have to take a shower, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and then it's the long way drive. I didn't even tell you about that, bro, and I'll tell you about that later, not on the pod. But that was the worst drive I've ever had in my entire you got life. No AC. Uh, yeah. So, I mean. They got a strong defense, especially, you know, their um, linebackers. linebackers. Uh, but as far as their offense, they ain't got Jack diddly do. all right? I mean, I hope the best for Baker. I mean, I think I said it last time, I like Baker. 
I liked him and his little antics in college, and I had high hopes for him. But, I mean, obviously he ain't proven much since. I don't know what's going to happen as far as the team if they don't pursue Mike Evans. If I was the team, you know, that's another situation like we talked about. That's literally the person that you need to pay more than probably anyone else other than those linebackers. Literally, that that that's the person you need to pay on your offense. That's the person you need to focus on making happy. And, yeah. and then and then Chris Godwin might be your second person, honestly, <laughs> because I mean, you you really have no other key stars as far as offensive wise throughout the whole. I mean, maybe. Maybe your lineman. I don't know. I didn't pay much attention to their line whenever they, they played. They have one of the best tackles in the league. Yeah. But. I didn't pay much attention to the lineman uh, whenever I did watch some of the Bucks games last year. But I don't know. As far as stars, that's your only, like, star star on offense. So, pay that man. Figure out something to keep him happy. Unless you want to give him away for picks. I mean, if you want to give him away for picks and go ahead and start – Branding up on your future, go ahead and do it. Yeah, man. I mean, they might as well. Yeah. I mean. um, like I said, they probably got like a year of being competitive, and then after this year I kind of see them falling off. Um, but moving on, Randall Cobb hit. So I'm sure most NFL fans have seen this hit by now. Um, I talked about it on Undisputed the other day. Um, so pretty much uh, Aaron dropped back. He threw it to the tight end kind of on like a, like a shallow cross, I believe. And, uh, you know, tight end was bringing it up the field. He had somebody chasing him, um, a, a safety or something, or a linebacker. And Randall Cobb comes from the opposite side of the field and just lowers his shoulder and drills the guy. Never saw him coming. Um, and there was really just no need for that kind of block. I mean, the dude don't even see you coming. He's not close enough to really, like, make a tackle on the tight end yet. As long, If you just, you know, double forearm, just give him a little shove or something, or even just put two hands on him, he's not getting to the, he's not getting to the tight end. And you could have knocked him over – just by, you know, giving him a little shove. Like, he, he, it was just a cheap shot. Um, they went back in the huddle, and they were, like, kind of chuckling about it, and Aaron made a joke about uh, – or Randall made a joke about, you know, Aaron having to pay the fine, I believe. Um, but, you know, all in all, it was just a dirty hit. There was really no need for that. It was just unnecessary roughness. Um, I mean, if, I, if I'm the NFL, I'd, I'd give him a game. I'd give him two games. I would suspend him. Um like I said, with that angle, you know, you really just – there was no reason to hit the guy like that. Um, and he ended up getting injured. So, uh, yeah, I, if it was me, I'm suspending him a game or two. But that's just my opinion. I don't know what you, what your opinion on it is, but that's my opinion. I mean, I wouldn't suspend him. I go cop. I mean, I think it was ridiculous. There was no reason. That, I mean, I understand there might be – some hop around some players getting around in preseason, but you're Randall Cobb, bro. Like, they're, they're, you're not a rookie. You don't need the hype. Everybody knows you can ball a little bit. So, I, I don't understand your whole point of doing that. It was just crazy in general. I wouldn't suspend him, uh, but I would definitely find him, and I would find him a horrible, horrible fine, like $500,000. I'd find him $500,000. Just so that way, like, that puts a – like, that's preseason. Nobody goes hard in preseason, like not, no, not a soul. If you go hit him that hard in the game, in the preseason game, then I'm giving you a game at least. Like I, you sit in a game, no matter what, in my opinion. Because I mean, you just took him out for a game, so you gonna get the same treatment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you did, but I don't know. It's just I definitely, I definitely find find him as much as I possibly could. But as far as suspending him, it was a nasty hit, but at the same time. There are plenty of necessary roughness calls that don't get fined, so I can. There's a difference when you see them coming though, and you get the sort of brace for it. That I mean, the the dude has yeah, no idea he didn't, you're coming. Yeah, he didn't have no. So, yeah, that's just my opinion on it. I don't think it was a cheap shot, um, but uh, not really much to talk about on this next next topic. But Cooper Cup, you know, coming back from I think an ACL tear last season, uh, apparently gets a minor. No, I think it's a hamstring. Yeah, I think it was a hamstring injury. So he's, you know, getting a little bit of a setback. Um, they don't know when exactly he'll be back. Um, I mean, all things considered, I'm excited to kind of watch the Rams this season. I hope they do bad so that Stetson gets to play. But, um, you know, you had the stuff come out with Stafford apparently, like, not being able to connect with his teammates in the locker room because they're so young, always being on their phones and stuff. His wife, you know, apparently talked about it on her podcast. So, you know, he's catching a lot of flack for that. But uh, I like Matthew Stafford. You know, he got his ring. You know, I liked him before. He finally got, you know, a chance to get a ring. He got his ring. So, 
know, I feel like he's accomplished what he needs to accomplish, and um, I just don't see them really winning a ring. They don't have their team for it anymore. So, in my opinion, you know, maybe you start Stafford a few games, you go on for, you throw Bennett in there, you know, see what he can do. Um, you know, let him learn from Stafford for a little bit. And, you know, the kid's got some wheels. He's got – people say he don't got an arm, but, you know, he's he's got a he's got a good enough arm to, to get the job done, I feel like. And uh, people are disrespecting him a little bit. But, you know, I understand why people don't like him. But I think he's got a chance to, to be a good enough quarterback. Like, let's see, who would I compare him to? Who's like – he's like – he's kind of like – He's what people say Dak is, but Dak isn't, is what I would say. Like, people think Dak is trash. People think Dak is never going to, like, uh, he's not good enough to lead a team to the Super Bowl. And I just don't think that's true. Um, I think he's, like, we put him in the top ten. I got him at, like, eight or so. Um, and people, what people think Dak is is what I feel like Bennett can be. Bennett can be, like, a average quarterback on the team, does the right thing, protects the football, but he needs, you know, a top five running back or a top – you know a couple good receivers to get the job done like he's not going to do it himself but I feel like he can be a piece to the puzzle um and you know the way the league's going you need a quarterback that can run so I mean he kind of fits that but I mean I don't know if it, if this was last year I would uh be kind of hype just because um the Rams are in the Cardinals division however it doesn't really matter either way last year or this year. The Cardinals went to heck, and they're going to go to heck this year. And to be honest, so are the 49ers. They're in our division too, so they're going to win it no matter what. So, I mean, either Pretty way, much. I get full. But I don't know, bro. Stetson, you a little bold on that. Uh, Dak? I said they're what people think Dak is. Oh, so you're saying he he gets the same disrespect Dak gets. That's what you No, saying. I'm saying – so, like, if I'm grading Dak on an overall, I'm giving him, like, a 91. Okay. Right. People say he's like an 83. You know what I mean? With the way people talk about him, they they talk about him like he's an 83. So like you're he's saying he? So you're saying he's what Dak? What other? He's people, what people think Dak okay. is. So okay, yeah. I, so like, if I feel like if Bennett gets to play a season, like he would be like an 80 overall. Like he would be like good enough to get to win you a couple games on his own, but not good enough to win you to get you into the playoffs. Like he's gonna need a really good running back or somebody else or just a receiver that's you know out of this world to like carry them you know he's not going to be the reason you make it to the playoffs or, or the reason you like get to a super bowl he's just going to be a good he's going to be good enough to help you get there you know what i mean you know who uh, a perfect comparison sense. is I, I i really and this is how just just because you know i've watched Stetson play and i hate the disrespect he gets he, he had it all in georgia he would lose it it, it, he would get even close to losing one game. It would be halftime. People would be like, oh, yeah, that's why he shouldn't even be on the team. That's why. He would, and now everybody's disrespecting him by his age. Now everybody's disrespecting him saying he's not good. Blah, 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 chill. All right? But here's who I think he would play like, honestly, whenever it comes time. And because I don't think Stafford's going to play many games this year. I, I just yeah. – I, I don't know what was happening with him last year. That was crazy. But – this year, I don't think he's going to play many games. I think they're going to try to bring in Stetson for a few games and see what happens. Yeah. But I think he's going to pop out, and he's going to be exactly like Daniel Jones. Because, yeah. I mean, I know everybody's got a little bit of praise for Daniel Jones. I still don't see what the big hoo-ha is. I think he's a decent average player, maybe just a teensy bit above average. But he's not no star. And uh, I, I don't know. I feel like that's what Stetson could be. Just I don't know. Like, everybody was doubting Brock Purdy whenever they had to switch to him last year because of all the injuries, and look at what the man did. I mean, he, he still kept them in the playoffs, and he still was performing until he got injured, and then they had McCaffrey out there throwing passes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can agree with that. Like, Jones is like that kind – of basically the same way. Like, he might get you – he might win you, like, four to five games because he played really good. But the other games, he's going to play average, and he's not going to do anything too crazy. It's just going to like be like Saquon in the backfield winning you games. So um, I, I agree with that. He's going to need pieces around him that are better than him to you know to elevate his game. Kind of like the Jalen Hurts syndrome. You know, he doesn't really have the pieces around him. He plays bad. He's throwing interceptions. Um, he's still got the wheels. You know, he he's he looks all right. But then you know he gets AJ Brown. Devontae Smith comes in. The line is obviously really good, top three, top five. The defense is top three. I mean, 
Say what you want, but Jalen had a lot of help. Not that Jalen ain't good. He played really well. He threw really good footballs. But, I mean, that team around him is crazy. So, I feel like there's a lot of quarterbacks like that that just don't have the team or aren't blessed, you know, to get these really good teams that, you know, some of these quarterbacks get. And that's why we never really say they're good because we never know. Like, put anybody else on that team, maybe they play better than Jalen or maybe they play just as good as Jalen. So, I mean, you can't look at it like that. Jalen played well. But I feel like, like I said, Bennett needs – big name players around him to kind of carry him you know what I mean so it's enough about him Chris Jones so they didn't get a contract done with Chris Jones Kelsey's begging Chris Jones to come back and them losing Chris Jones would be a huge loss um I, that would definitely like bring them down in my you know Super Bowl predictions I'm, I would still say they're my favorite but that's just because of the offense I feel like the offense is still going to be what it was because we saw him do it with nothing. So it, it, they can only get better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Chris Jones, that's going to take a big hit to the defense. The run game is not going to be the same. They're not going to be able to stop the run as good. And he's probably one of the best, if not the best, pass rushing defensive tackle in the league. Um, if you're considering Aaron Donald a defensive tackle, then obviously I'm not going to put him over Aaron Donald. But if you put Aaron Donald on the edge, then I think Chris Jones takes the DT role. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a very important piece to uh, their team as a whole. Does he just want more money? Is that what it said? He just wants to get extended, I think, is is the issue. It might be a money thing, a more money thing, because I thought he got extended like a year ago, but I could be wrong. I mean, I ain't too mad either way, to be honest with you. I, obviously, you know, if I'm the – Chiefs, I would love to have Chris Jones. Who wouldn't? Who? What team in this whole entire world? I don't even care if you're the Rams and you have Aaron Donald. I don't care who you are and who you have. You're gonna want Chris Jones on your team, all yeah. right? But at the end of the day, you know, if it is a money thing, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you do have the highest quarterback, highest paid quarterback in the league, and then, you know, and he's he's not the highest paid per year anymore, but. Well, anyway, at one time totally, he, yeah. he had signed the long, ten year yeah. largest contract, whatever. But and then you're also having to pay all these other people. You know, Chris Jones eventually gonna want more money, even if this ain't the case right now. He's gonna eventually want more money. I mean, when you when you're literally either top or runner up, top defensive tackle in the league. I mean, what you know? I I'm not I'm not I understand you know getting two chips is cool and all, but at the end of the day, you know. That's cool. You already cemented your legacy. But yeah. you're still going to want as much money as you possibly can get because everybody's greedy. Everybody wants as much money as you can possibly get. Nobody's just going to stay just balanced the whole time. Because, I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, Chris Jones could always go to somewhere like the 49ers. Oh, I mean, my God, that would be like nasty. he is like 31-ish. So, like, he's going – he's theoretically hitting his regressing age and his regressing years. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, still he's – you're not. You can't get a defensive tackle like that. Even if he's 35, he's probably still better than you know an average defensive tackle. So, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Jones. I think that's a really important piece for them. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I think he'll end up playing. Even if they like don't get a deal done when the season starts, I feel like I feel like he's the type of player to play anyway. But um, you know, he's just trying to let them know that he feels a little disrespected in the money department, I guess. But. Um, I think that's it for the NFL. Moving on, we'll get through these really quick. NBA topics, there's not much to talk about. Um, Team USA undefeated in open play? I don't know if that's exactly what it's called. They played like the, like the, I guess you call them like scrimmage games, and they won all those, and then they moved to pool play, which I think is like they split the teams up into different pools, different uh, sections, and uh, – they play the teams in that, and they're undefeated in that. Like I said, they had a close game uh, the other day, and I, and I know Anthony Edwards, like, for the the, the, high, the the caption that I saw was Anthony Edwards won in the game. Um, he had, like, 17, all 17 of his points in the second half. So, I mean, I don't know if he won in the game or he's the reason they were down in the first half. But, <laughs> you know, say what you want. Uh, Edwards is, you know, being that alpha on the team. So, you know, kudos to him. Um, I mean, if you're looking at that team, I would probably say – Edwards is probably that man on the team. Um, and Steve Kerr seems to like him, so maybe, you know, Anthony Edwards to the Warriors. But we'll uh, see where that goes. Um, and then uh, you have the referee, Eric Lewis, who coached or refed a lot of Boston games, apparently, uh, was a part of that one that LeBron ended up losing because he didn't get a foul, I'm pretty sure. 
So apparently, you know, they think he has social media accounts and he's tweeting about, um, you know, rigging games or I don't know what I don't really know what he's been tweeting on them, but more of the story is they th- they think he has uh, social media accounts and he's showing bias towards certain teams, things of that nature. So he ends up retiring um, so that the league, you know, stops the investigation. So that pretty much makes him look suspicious to to everyone, and that kind of makes the finals. I'm pretty sure he was a ref in some of the finals games, so. Take that how you will. Um, not that the Celtics were in the finals, but either way, um, people think you know he was, you know, kind of favoring teams there, rigging the games. But I don't know if you have an opinion on you know those two topics. But I don't really watch the Olympics to be honest. There's just too not much. Not the Olympics, but go ahead. Uh, oh, FIBA. FIBA I about. don't. I don't watch FIBA either. I mean, I don't, I don't care nothing about that. I care about NBA. But the ref thing, I think it actually started out. I think what it was is he had. Someone dug up, like, an old picture of him, and Mm -hmm. it was him and his wife, and they had, like, a Boston or a Berkshire or something like that. And then that's where everything started. And it's like, I don't know. You're going to tell me that you don't think that every referee has a favorite team? team. Every Mm -hmm. referee, that's why they came into the profession is because they like that sport, and they're going to have a favorite team. NFL has favorite teams. College has – Everybody has a favorite team somewhere. I mean, that's just how it is. And nobody's impartial. Even judges aren't impartial. You know what I mean? Like, well, actually, I don't know why. Yeah, cut that out. I don't even know why I just <laughs> well, said judges. <laughs> he's got some beef with Judge yeah. Judy or something. I just, what? I just, I don't even know why I said that, bro. But uh, here's my <laughs> what? The, what? But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it's a. Here's the thing. They were just. I think because you know how NBA is and you know how every big organization like that is, they'll start prying, prying into your social life. So it's just like, you know, he already made his back. I mean, no matter what you do, if you're if you're getting paid by the NBA itself, you got a bag. I mean, at the end of the day, you got a bag. So, you know, I feel like he might have just been like, hey, bro, this I don't feel like he was doing anything too corrupt because, I mean, at the end of the day, if he was people would have already caught it by now. People would have been like, hey, this referee has missed like seven calls that we need to pay attention to. You know what I mean? So it's just I don't think he's doing anything crazy. I think he just doesn't like everybody getting on him about it and then just like, all right, let's investigate this dude. No. Yeah, I don't – yeah, I really don't think he was – like, sure, he might have like been a call here and there that you're what you're playing – you know, you're reffing your favorite team. You might like let it slide. But like – Saying he's just out here just rigging games, that's a little ridiculous. Um, and he probably just doesn't really want the attention on him. You know, he he came there to be a ref. He didn't come there to be LeBron James. And, you know, he don't got an Instagram account. He out here trying to get followers and stuff like that. You know, that's probably – it's probably against – like, if you're a ref, you probably can't have a social media account. That's that's probably, like, in the rules of, you know, being a ref. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah, moving on. Last topic, 2K. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did slide down some build over here. They're yeah. back. It's no, nasty. Uh, I mean, I would I mean, take down the three or I mean, out of If it. they're – like I said, they came out before, like, everything was leaking and said that stats matter more than badges now. So, it's like, okay, do you – if that's the case, then maybe it's going to be like you don't really need Hall of Fame badges. Like, they're going to make you really good. Like, if you make a really good shooter and you get all these badges, then it's going to make you really good at shooting. But you can make an all-around build like this and still be good. Um, and I wouldn't doubt if it's it's going to be like last year. People running around with 6'9 shooting guards, which is probably going to be the case as long as they get, like, a good dunk and they get decent uh, decent dribble moves. Even if they can't, like, speed boost like the, the smaller guards. Like, I'm sure, you know, 80 ball handle 75. There's people – the dribble guards are going to find something for these, you know, lower rating builds that is just as good. Or, you know, maybe not just as good as the people with really good ball handle, but good enough to play. And, I mean, if you're playing rec, you probably don't need that anyway. Like, you're just looking for an all-around build. You can play defense. You can shoot. You can drive. Like, you you only got so much space to work with in rec anyway. So, it's not like you need a build that is going to be, like, getting crazy open. So, I feel like in rec, you're going to see a lot of this. Maybe not in park as much. In twos, you're definitely not going, probably not going to see this. But in rec, I feel like that's probably a viable build. My thing is, is, and this is why I wanted to talk about it. Oh, that'll probably be like the two guard, probably. And like the point guard might be like a short guard. but Yeah, probably. But this is why I want to talk about it. Because there's, you know, the, the 
community is starting to get, you know, all these builds coming through today and all that other stuff. And there's this video that's going a little crazy of this guy. Apparently, he don't have any badges yet, which you're supposed to get your badges as soon as the attributes are upgraded or whatever, the yeah. bronze badges. So I assume he does have Limitless on bronze. But he shot like a nasty half court, greened it after like dribbling and all yeah, that. Yeah, looked like he was low on stamina yeah. and he was like dang near moving when he shot <laughs> yeah. it. And I was like, I mean, I looked at it too like – that should never go in. Yeah, that's crazy. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. All right. Now, stay with me for a second. Here's my thing. He had – and it said he has a 99.3. Bro, if you have a 99.3, you, you're sacrificing something. Like, you're, I don't care what you, you did. If you made a 99.3 99, in this game, like – or last year, you literally – you weren't good at anything else. You literally. really weren't. Like, like, I mean, you were pretty much trash at everything else. Yeah. Like, you might have get, like, a 70 layup and – like a 75 perimeter defense maybe, but, like, you're going to be slow. Like, it, it, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, and if I'm in that situation, here's my thing. That means all I can do is shoot, and if it's all I can do, bro, I, it, me personally, how I feel, I feel like you should be pressing me from all the way at the other end of the court. I feel like yeah. I should be able to green full courts. If, I'm, if I have a 99.3 mm -hmm. and I have all these badges and I, don't, I can't do nothing else in the game, Bro, I should be able to hit a full court anytime I want if somebody ain't uh, – that's just how I like, feel about it. Hash marks should be, like, easy for you. I don't know if I would say, like, you hit half, full court, half court. <laughs> but, like, hash marks should be, like, limitless range, Hall of Fame or something. Like, Oh, yeah. That, that should sure. be a layup. That should literally be a layup. Yeah, like, you're so bad at everything else, that should be easy. Like, because you, if you're sacrificing so much for that, like, I need to be able to stand at the half court or a hash mark. That way, you know, pulls the defense out and stuff like that. But, yeah, I agree. My thing is, though, is people don't like the fact that there are balanced builds in here like that. Here's the thing, and I understand 6 nines were in the game. Like, I was having fun on my builds, and then in 23, all of a sudden, 6 nine point guards come out of the thing, and I can't use my 6-4 uh, point guard anymore because I'm literally getting killed on defense, even though I have my defense up. The, I mean, he's just blowing by me, or he's just stronger than me, and it, it's just all around messed up. So... And then on top of that, he's taller than me and still has decent stats. So I had to make a 6 9. And then, yeah. I mean, I still have fun with it. But here's the thing I can't be mad about people making balanced builds. And the only reason I say that is because, bro, we're paying $70 for this video game. Some people paying 100 I'm paying 150 for the video game. Then you're having to pay for upgrades on it. Like, yeah. people are paying $100, people are paying $200. I just feel like I don't care about nobody yet, bro. If I'm spending, if I'm me personally, I'm spending over two hundred fifty dollars on the game. If I'm spending two hundred fifty dollars for a video game, I want what I want. I honestly, I feel like spend two hundred fifty dollars on just a video game, I should be able to have ninety nine everything and just go crazy. But you know that ain't how it is. It does have to be just a little balanced. So, I mean, I don't know, dog. I should I should be able to make a six nine with eighty everything. Honestly, if I'm spending that much on it. You have to spend, like last year, to get a player from, if you had just played him as a 60 overall the whole time and you had the ability to upgrade him to 99. It would be like 150, to, yeah, 200 probably. You had to pay over $100 to do that just to upgrade your build, not even the game. You already bought the game. But $100 just to upgrade the build, and you had to grind for it too. You had to grind for after 85 or 86 or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. I just I understand some people are like, like some people are like in the comments talking about, Oh yeah, well you should know your role and you should uh, play spot up, bro. I don't care about my role. All right, I'm paying two hundred fifty dollars for the video game. I want the ball in my hands every time before losing. That's that's how I feel about it. So I don't. Maybe care some people like sitting in the corner. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get people that like sitting in the corner in the park and letting their their point guard dribble twenty four seconds and then passing me the ball in the corner and and you miss one shot and they on you like, <laughs> come on now. I ain't even felt what the ball. I don't even know what the ball feels like. But yeah, uh, I, I ain't finna do that. That that that's old me. That was, that was. But yeah, like realistically, like fifty bucks to get a bull, uh, get a bill max should be like what it is. Like fifty's yeah. fifty's still a lot, to, you know. But like, I feel it's like a lot. fifty bucks should be like, yeah, that should get you a bill ninety nine. Twenty five. Now that I'm easily. thinking about it, twenty five is a nice because yeah, I mean honestly, yeah. fifty dollars. You got to think that's like a season pass basically for any other video game for the whole year, like. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, but like yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like Call of Duty had they used to have season pass for the DLCs, and you get all four packs. Yeah, it was like twenty dollars or twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. bro. You're telling me I gotta pay fifty dollars? Not even fifty. I gotta pay over a hundred for you this. You basically gotta pay fifty dollars to play the game. 
after yeah. you already bought the game. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And my team's so. the same way. They made my team worse because now there ain't you can't even grind for the auction house. You got to grind and just. Yeah, I don't see how they're not lighting a fire on the HQ right now after that. I mean, not having an auction house in a mode like that is just. Like, I feel like that just is. It, there shouldn't even be a question about it being in the game. But. They're going to start doing it for every game. They're going to do it for Madden soon. I doubt it. They. I, they did it for Madden Mobile around Madden 2019. They're going to do it for Madden soon, I guarantee you. Uh, now, they I, make so much money off of that that I just I just don't see that ever happening. But I don't know. You got to think. I mean, if you can buy points, think about it. If you could just buy points, or not points, but coins. I mean, it's pointless anyways to buy coins. Or, like they're like, oh, you can buy them up points now. It's pointless. You're still buying from the store. It's I mean, the if they thing. switch it to like that and I spend 100 bucks, I better like – be able to have the best team the whole year <laughs> like and it's not gonna be like that so I, I don't see them going away from that i feel like i mean they're two different companies so i don't know i mean he said he did it with madden mobile but like how many people are really playing madden mobile compared to like oh yeah compared to know, madden the, the they're, actual they're, games yeah. so i don't know i feel like it kind of makes sense for that but um that's really it for the topics um they're waiting to play anxiously as they're staring at us doing the podcast so uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces. Deuces.